Iceland is one of the most remarkable countries in the world. It's the most volcanically active region on Earth. It's also extremely cold in the winter because it's so far north, although it does have a maritime climate. It offers an unbelievable challenge to the photographer. It has snow fields, ice caps, extraordinary geology, the most dramatic coastline you'll see anywhere, and very, very high contrast. It also has the magical possibility of seeing the Aurora Borealis, one of the most amazing natural phenomena to be seen anywhere. This country is a great opportunity to test the IQ 260. This is the Snarfellsnes Peninsula in Western Iceland. Uh, to the south is Reykjavik and this is pretty much central west Iceland and it's about as far west as you can go in Iceland. The sun is rising over the highlands of the Icelandic interior to the southeast of us. It's just about to strike the ice field that covers the whole of that ancient volcano. I'm using a Phase 1 645 DF uh, Plus camera with the new IQ260 back. 110mm Schneider lens, it's, it's just the lens for this composition. It frames it as I want it to be. Uh, so as the sun is now hitting onto the ice field in the distance, pink light is starting to come through into the reflections of the ice below. Just been shooting out on the end uh, among huge boulders of basalt and dolerite and other types of volcanic rock with huge waves pounding in. Uh, a great test for the IQ260. There have been several occasions when the big waves have dumped huge amounts of seawater over me while I was standing with my tripod. Um, the camera seems to have survived fine, I'm happy to say. Uh, it, it also reminded me that there's no way in the world I could have shot this on a technical camera, a view camera, a film camera, or even indeed a, a, probably a technical view camera with this back on it because it's totally impractical. So this was a really nice opportunity to exploit the capabilities of a medium format DSLR. when you have these bright white sunlit plumes of seawater with white mountain uh, snow covered mountain behind and then deep dark shadows of black volcanic rock it really is a profound test probably the ultimate landscape test for any camera system this has a 13 stop dynamic range that is the best there's ever been and of course it's very high resolution so for a landscape photographer where fine detail subtlety and tonal qualities are essential, this could be a really, really exciting development. Add that to genuine long exposure capabilities for the first time in this kind of equipment of exposures up to an hour, that makes a very, very exciting opportunity for me. The first day was beautiful. It was clear, blue skies pretty much all day. It made for some great opportunities, albeit very challenging as well with the high contrast. One of the really enjoyable aspects of this trip has been meeting up with Tony Spencer. Uh, Tony is a younger landscape photographer than me, uh, very, very talented, and he really specializes in the subarctic and polar regions. Uh, he has a huge amount of experience of shooting the Aurora Borealis particularly, and he knows Iceland really well. After a fantastic day yesterday, the weather has gone off big time. The forecast is looking quite promising for the north of the country. So we're going to move and see what we can find up there and we're much more optimistic for tomorrow and the day after. We set off through rain, uh, sleet and eventually snow. Very, very windy. It was actually a pretty exciting road trip. We are now at Mivatn, right in the far north of Iceland. 
The weather is completely changed. It's clear there's not a breath of wind. The photographic opportunities here are absolutely fantastic and I can't wait for the sun to rise and see how it reveals the forms in front of me. I'm using the IQ260 uh, back on a Phase 1 645 DF Plus camera. The shutter speed is about an eighth of a second and the aperture is f11 which is my favorite aperture to use the best compromise between diffraction and depth of field i'm using daylight white balance so i can see the color cast of the light quite clearly and i'm overexposing according to the camera settings by a stop or a stop and a third each time and that gives the bright histogram that is ideal for a snowy landscape and it renders the scene much more as i'm seeing it if I were to go with standard camera settings, it would look underexposed. The sun has risen above the distant hills. I have golden light coming across the landscape, skimming across the snow, and the effect is quite fantastic. And we pretty much didn't stop shooting all day. It was the most amazing light. Beautiful conditions, snow-covered landscape. These astrugi are wind-blown snow patterns, and they make a wonderful foreground for this very wide landscape and especially because the clouds are shaped rather like the edge of the, uh, of the snow formations here. There's really some quite exciting compositional possibilities. We also photographed at night with the geothermic features and I found myself doing the kind of images that I've never tried before. Very experimental, very exciting. Tony, you've photographed auroras many, many times. The IQ260 has a special long exposure mode. It's optimized for an ISO of 140. Do you feel that that still has potential? Absolutely, I do. Um, I think in the first instance, there's far more scope to pull in post-processing to pull back in the shadows and lift, lift the shadows up so that we've, you, know, you can brighten the exposure probably a lot, a lot more than you would with 35 millimeter full frame images yeah. anyway. So even an underexposed exposure can still be pretty decent quality? Yeah, I would think so. I think it would be far, you'd be far better with a, a file from one of these than, than you would with a 35 mil underexposed image. The files that, from the tests we've just done are incredibly clean. The exposures I just made at, at 140 at two minutes are completely noise free. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. Yeah, it's, they're, they're looking absolutely fantastic. I always expected Iceland to be a real challenge for a digital back, and so it has proved. I've had to work in sea spray. It's been really, really cold, high wind conditions, extremes of contrast, extremes of long exposure. All of these things would challenge any digital camera but the IQ260 has come through it with flying colors.